that we find ourselves with a repeated linear factor in the denominator. It's not very clear here because it's uh, in unfactorized form. So the first thing we would have to do is to try and factorize this denominator here, where you could do it as part of uh, the work, or we could just we do it at the beginning here, which is the x cubed plus 2x squared plus x. So there's obviously a common factor of x here. So if we do that, we'll have a look at what is left. We've got x uh, plus 1. And we'll have a wee look at the term in the brackets there. Always when you factorise with one method, check and see if we can factorise it further. Uh, x squared plus 2x plus 1 is a trinomial expression, and it does actually factorise to x plus 1 times x plus 1, because uh, we've got the numbers at the end, 1 and 1 multiply together to give you 1, and they add together to give you plus 2. So here we have our expression, and as you can tell here, we can actually simplify that to x multiplied by x plus 1 all squared. So in actual fact, we have there's a repeated linear factor. So if we go back to the original rational function, 2x squared plus 7x plus 3 divided by, well, I'm going to write in uh, that right now instead of writing it out as a uh, cubic function, we're going to write it out in factorised form, x times x plus 1 all squared, and we've got a repeated, we've got a linear factor here, so we've got a fraction over x, as shown in the previous examples, and we also then have two more fractions. The first one is just going to be x plus 1, and the second one is going to be x plus 1 squared. That's the actual power that we have to get to, otherwise we would keep going. And we know that we're going to have constant terms in each of these, A, B, and C. At the moment, we've got plus signs between them. So we're going to add them uh, unless we're told otherwise. Multiply through by the denominator. Um, we get multiplied by x times x plus 1 squared. So if we multiply through on the left-hand side, we're left with the numerator. And on the right-hand side, if I think about the first fraction, the x terms cancel out. That leaves me with a multiplied by x plus 1 squared. If I have a look at the second fraction, one of the x plus 1 terms in the multiplier cancels out. So I'm left with b times x times x plus 1. And if we have a look at the third one, then we can see that the whole x plus 1 squared term cancels out. And we're going to have c times x. So at that point, we can start to think about different values for x, such that it will simplify our equation. So we can look in the first bracket here. We've got x minus x plus 1, which means that if we were to choose x equals to negative 1, then that term is going to go to zero. We're actually going to lose our a and b terms here. So when x is negative 1, we've got 2 times negative 1. Squared plus 7 times negative 1 plus 3. The right-hand side, we're going to have a. Oh, we're not going to have a at all. That's going to go to zero. We're not going to have our b term either, but we are going to have a c term, which is c times negative 1. Remember that negative 1 squared is positive 1, so we simplify it as 2 minus 7 plus 3 equals negative c. 2 subtract 7 is negative 5, plus 3 is negative 2. And if we multiply through by negative 1 or whatever other method you want to use, we can say that c has a value of 2. There's one other uh, value of x we can choose to quickly get rid of two of the terms, and that's multiply through by the x. 
which means that again the B term and the C term are going to go to zero. So if I were to say when x equals zero, uh, on the left hand side it goes to x goes to zero, seven x goes to zero. So I'm actually only left with three, the constant term on the left hand side. On the right hand side, we're only going to be left with the a term, that's a multiplied by 1 squared effectively. And if you want to add your plus here to show that you're considering the other two terms, but they, we know they're going to go to 0. So 1 squared is 1, so very quickly you can deduce that a is equal to 3. So we've got two of our terms, a is 3 and c is 2. We want to try and then work out a value for b. Okay, so what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to use a slightly different method. I could choose another value for x, substitute that in, and use the values I know for a and c to work out b. One of the other methods we can use is to equate the terms on the left and right. And I'm going to focus here on the x squared terms. And what we find out is that uh, this a term here, when we expand the bracket x plus 1 all squared, that's going to be x squared plus 2x plus 1. In other words, if we multiply a by everything in that, we would end up with a times x squared, ax squared. So it would be the first term if we fully expanded that right-hand side. And it's the same with the second term, the b term here, bx multiplied by the x here, the first term, if we expanded this bracket here, would be bx squared. You notice that the c term does not have an x squared term attached to it, so that if we were to fully expand the right-hand side, we would have ax squared, and then later on we would have plus bx squared, and the answer to that would have to be 2x squared, which is what it says it should be on the left. So that's a wee technique that we can use sometimes to help us. We're going to equate the x squared terms. So on the left-hand side, we know that that should be the number 2. So I'll write in 2, and I'll put my wee x squared to remind you that that's where that came from. And on the right-hand side, we know that we're going to have a x squared, and then later on in the expression, we would have to add b x squared. And that must be a true thing. Now we can drop the x squared terms. I only put them in just to kind of make sure you remind you that where they came from. So we can really just say that 2 equals a plus b because we're really, when we're adding together the x squared terms, it's only the coefficients that we actually think about adding. We know that a and b must give us a value of 2. Well, we happen to know that a is 3. And in solving that, we get the answer that b is negative 1. That's a method that you could use at any point. You can equate x squared terms. You could equate the x terms. Or indeed, you can equate the constant terms on both sides. So we've got all three values that we need so we can write our conclusion therefore what was the original expression 2x squared plus 7x plus 3 2x squared plus 7x plus 3 divided by well we started off with a cubic function x squared plus 2x squared plus x is equal to, we had, a, first of all, a fraction with a denominator of x, and then we had x plus 1, and we had x plus 1 all squared. We worked out that a was 3, b negative 1, and C take the value of 2. Which means putting these in the correct order, A was over X, so that's 3 over X. B 
property over x, our b value is negative 1, so I'm going to put a minus sign in front of the fraction and just put a 1 on the top, and my c value is 2 plus 2. So our partial fractions for this rational function are 3 over x minus 1 over x plus 1 plus 2 over x plus 1 all squared. Okay, go away and practice some more like that.